Hey, Don the Auction Professor here. Just like the title says, an eBay emergency and what to do about it. Um, in my area, we just had a bad ice storm just two days ago. It knocked out pretty much power for the entire area. Phone lines were down, the whole works. Even cell service was semi-diminished in some areas as well, too. We're talking thousands of people. It's one of the biggest instances like this that's happened up here. We were out of power for two full days and nights. Um, it's winter here. It was 15 degrees. The inside of our house was like 42 degrees. But everybody here was fine. So the main point of this discussion today is being prepared for issues like that. We were actually in Mississippi when Hurricane Katrina came through, um, 150 miles from the coast, mind you. And Katrina actually went over our actual house. A uh, direct line of path was 70 to... 80 so mile an hour winds with some gusts well up into the hundreds took off a roof from the, our garage knocked down trees just everywhere no electricity but what we learned from Katrina is to always be prepared for these types of issues one thing we have done ever since then is we actually have an inverter what a inverter is is it'll take the DC current from your car and it'll switch it to alternating current AC which is what will run your household appliances we have an inverter that will run a laptop and a printer um, anybody who does FBA, um, you know, RA or anything like that, chances are you've already got one. You know, it's just something that everybody has that does what we do. You literally take it with you so you can ship your um, your RA to, you know, Amazon, do your FBA from the road. So you don't even have to bring the stuff back sometimes. We carry boxes sometimes and we'll just ship it from wherever we're at or we'll drop it off at an at actual facility, depending on where we're at at the time, of course, or just to get out of our way so we can continue on our, our path. So I have one. Most people who do this do. But if you're new to this or you literally just do eBay or just sell online and don't worry about RA and any of that other stuff, this is something that's key. Three times in, in our history on eBay, we've been out of power for at least two days. The Hurricane Katrina, it was out for a whole week. So, you know, you've got to be prepared. Um, that's the main thing I could say is get an inverter so at least you can run it off of your car. So start your car up, plug your inverter into your car. We have a couple extension cords so I can just keep everything where it belongs. And then boom, you know, I've got power. You have to have your car running for that to work so you're not draining or doing anything your battery. That's one option that you can take. But again, you need to have some plan in place. There's just no way around it. Ice storms up here, thousands of people were out of power. It could have affected, you know, hundreds of actual sellers in the general area up here because it wasn't just the state. It encompassed the three state area, this ice storm that came through this past Monday. I do have a link to an inverter down below. I do get a small percentage off of it if, if you do happen to buy one. Again, I'm not putting that down there for the percentage. I'm putting it down there. Look what an inverter is and read up on it. You can run stuff on your house when you're not using the inverter for eBay, plug in a heater or whatever it takes you to do. You've got enough juice to do it from your car. I can still get gas. I just don't have any electricity in the area where we're at. So, you know, post office is still open, so I'm still able to run packages straight from my house. You know, there's no big deal. They come by and pick it up, so I didn't even have to leave the house to do that. When I know an ice storm's coming in or we've got bad weather, I always fill up our vehicles with gas to the brim just in case. We were um, in the situation with Katrina. I did at least fill up my gas tank, so I had plenty of gas at, at, our, at our place when we were living in Mississippi. So, again, this is something you have to think about. If your primary business, your primary way to make money is on eBay, you protect yourself every way you can. And this is one of the key ways you can do it. It's a simpleton thing. They're 50 to 75 bucks for one that will run those two pieces of equipment that you need. And then you can plug a heater in when you're done. You'll at least have some form of entertainment or whatever the case may be. Another way, if you at least have a laptop with some power still left in it, you can actually go to the library and print them up from the library if you want. Every local library that I've ever seen or heard will let you do that. You don't even have to go to the library. From our place, I, if for some reason I couldn't print from our house, if I log into our library's site, you can actually upload a file to print at your local location. I can pick anywhere in the city to send this file to. Um, you just put in the information that it asks for. It's usually three things. Your, your library card, your passcode, and then your um, email address, and then boom, it prints out there. It's 15 cents a sheet of paper. I've used that option years ago. It's still there. I've talked to them recently. You know, it's just something else you can do if there's a problem. You can charge your your uh, laptop there. You can charge your phone at the library as well, too, as long as they have power. And if not, go to a little farther away one if you have to. You always have to have a second way around everything that you do. 
Like with Katrina, if I couldn't do something for a week on eBay, I could have lost my account. They're not always going to waive you because of natural disasters. In this case, the post office was not closed. There was no disruption in the postal service. There was only electricity cut from most of the residential areas. So I would be held liable for not shipping out within my required time. And I know somebody's going to come back and say, change your policy. You know, it's too late when, the, when it's already set to one and those items already sold. You can't change your policy the next day and, and expect it to count towards the items you've already sold under the old policy policy. It doesn't work that way. Those items were already sold. So it only affects the new ones. And I still wouldn't need to do that because, again, I can still print from the house with the inverter. You know, a generator would be great, but I'm not going to waste the money on it. If you're going to run a generator off of gas, you have to start them up every so, so often to make sure it's still good. You just might as well use the car and an inverter in my book. I know you can't run a refrigerator and all this kind of thing with with um, a inverter, at least none of the big ones, but you know, it's an option out there for you. So, you know, that's just a touch on that. The only other thing I could say is we have a BOP. So if I was completely out of business, let's say in the week issue when, when um, we had no power for a whole week, it covers my lost income. It covers any damages from, from the hurricane or anything like that. I know a lot of people say, hey, I've got homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. It doesn't usually cover your business. Look at the clause. Give them a call up and ask. Those are totally different policies. I spent a long time trying to find somebody who does this sort of business insurance-wise to get a BOP. So I've called everybody in the book, every major insurance company, Allstate, Geico, you name it. I've called every single one in the book to get who we got. And it took a long time to find it. So most policies for renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance do not cover the business aspect. Now, the business policy will cover the dwelling as well as other things in the dwelling as long as your business is in there. So that, in my opinion, if you're running a business, is a better thing to have. And I say this because for those people who your only source of income is online selling out of your house or whatever your facility is, if something happens to that and you are not covered, you're SOL. You're out of business. You could be out living on the street with no income coming in. How are you going to recover if all of your merchandise was destroyed? Homeowners and renters insurance just doesn't cover your business. Um, they're going to ask you to get another one. And then when they hear what kind of business you are doing, chances are they're not going to be offering it to you. I can tell you from experience, we've had a BOP for several years. Uh, every year I call around other places to see if they offer it for a cheaper rate. It's a thing I do at the end of every year. I always do this. There aren't any others that I can find that offer anything like what I get for anywhere comparable whatsoever. I'm not going to give you names. I'm not here preaching about it. I'm just expressing the, the, the need for anybody who has a family who does this as their full-time business to cover your business with insurance. You, you drive and put insurance on your car for a reason. If you only have one car, you darn well better have insurance on it because something happens to that, you're out. If you have a brand new car, you've got to have insurance on it. Even if you're not required, who in their right mind would buy a $40,000 car and not insure it? in case something happens to it. A tree could fall on it. It could be no one's fault and you would be SOL without insurance. A tree could fall on your house. It's the same principle. Stuff like that happens. We've lost a house to Katrina as well. I mean, completely lost a house. Ripped out the roof, flooded it, water damaged, the whole world. So I tell you from personal experience, you have to have insurance. So again, a BOP is necessary. It's a small, minuscule amount of money to spend for safety, security for your business. There's so many people who are out of business because of a simple mistake. Just like if you sell from your house and someone slips, falls while they're buying something from you at your house, they can sue you. If you sell an item to somebody online, let's say it's a used item and it was a recalled item and you didn't know that because you didn't even know what to title it or the actual name of the item and someone gets hurt by that, you are 100% liable. Sure, they can go after the maker of it, but you are the supplier of the item. It could be something as simple as an RA item that two months down the road is determined to be unsafe and you sold it, the person still has it and they're still using it. You are liable for that. You can't recall those items. You have to take all of that in, in, into consideration when you're doing this sort of business, whatever sort of business you are doing. You know, there's just so many reasons someone can sue someone these days. Every business in the real world has insurance for all of these certain types of incidences. 
every business, I promise you. You can't even get a loan or money or any help whatsoever without having insurance on your business. So again, we just had our power out for two days. So that's why I'm addressing these issues. The BOP would cover any lost wages. You know, the inverter would help me or, you know, whatever the case may be. If you want to get a generator or have a generator, whatever the case may be, you need a backup form of being able to do everything you do normally. Whatever it takes to get the business done. I would rather be out in the cold, you know, packing up and shipping than actually not fulfilling orders in the same stated time frame. It makes you look so much better when stuff goes out as it should, even with disasters and things going on. That's just my take on it. Handle it as you wish. I know everybody has a different take on everything, but in my honest opinion, from doing eBay since day one and from being a professional GM and an RM for 20 plus years, insurance is a must and so is having a backup plan for everything that you do well hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts again everybody has their own take on this um best rule of thumb is always have a game plan in case something like this happens every business i've ever worked for had you know a, a contingency plan that would take over if something happened we had extra equipment and, and on and on and on this is just something you do when this is your only source of income you have to do it and take it seriously like this so anyway hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified when i post new content or go live subscribe and tell a friend